Hi there folks, welcome to another video. This is Don at Affordable Desert Living. Today we're going to look at permits in Cochise County 101. First of all, let's look at what is an opt-out permit. I'm going to give you a quote directly from the Cochise County Permit Office. The purpose of this amendment is to exempt a rural residential owner builder that is located in RU, SM, and SR zoning districts and has a parcel that's four acres or more from compliance with the Cochise County Building Safety Code in a residential construction project. By statute, this exemption does not exempt owner builders from statewide codes such as the plumbing and fire codes and regulations regarding smoke detectors, nor does it exempt owner builders from fire codes adopted by fire districts or the county. So for example, you can't just put up an outhouse somewhere on your property instead of using a composting toilet system. Or can you plumb your sink water so that it just goes out of your home and just leaves a stench somewhere or even worse, drains down into a wash. Cochise County has been known for years as a place for folks who are innovative and creative and want to build homes that are not the typical American home. For example, an earth bag home, straw bale home, or a shed to home conversion. So why does the county offer this unique permitting process? So to quote the county, by allowing owner builders these options, this amendment is intended to encourage the use of ingenuity and personal preferences of the owner builder in allowing and facilitating the use of alternative building materials and methods. My perspective is that historically Cochise County appears to have wanted folks to move here. There has always been a lot of vacant unused land. More people means more revenue for the county. I personally believe an opt-out permit should be considered a rare privilege and celebrated as such. Remember, I moved here from California where even remodeling your own bathroom requires a major expensive permit. The opt-out is not an excuse to create something that's unsafe or unsightly. I believe anyone selecting the opt-out should do everything possible to create both an economical and attractive home site that one can be proud of. So what are the main advantages of the opt-out? Cost, cost, cost. All of the permits for an opt-out are cheaper than a regular full inspection permit process. But the reality is you only save a few hundred dollars with the actual cost of the permit itself. The big savings come in the form of two key points. Number one, you're not paying expensive prices from licensed contractors who are certified to pass the inspection process as you are the owner builder yourself. And number two, you can design a small affordable home that's attractive and well built, but avoid the classic stick built or manufactured home. Crunch the numbers and you'll see for yourself that uh, a straw bale home or a shed to home conversion is much cheaper thousands of dollars cheaper. This creates the opportunity for folks who could never afford a traditional home with an amazingly wonderful alternative and to finally acquire a debt-free home of their own. In this day and age, this is golden. So what are the disadvantages of the opt-out? Well, you'll never be able to obtain a certificate of occupation. This means that as an investment, your property might not work for reselling later down the road. Unless the new buyer uh, wants to do a cash sale. 
Many financial institutions will not loan money to a new buyer. The county was polite and didn't linger on this aspect with me personally, but a staff member did make sure I knew this. Some insurance companies may choose to not provide insurance. As a side note, I assumed I would never be able to have a street address. Imagine how keen I was when I looked at my approved permit. There it was, my new rural street address. Fantastic. What are the main steps in obtaining your completed permit? First, go to the Cochise County website, download the permit, then begin interacting with Cochise County staff if you have questions. Decide how many bedrooms your new home will have, and then hire a septic installer with the county to begin the septic creation process. Once the PERC test is complete and the septic site that you've chosen is approved, you can move forward as your septic installer will send the results into the county office. Produce a sketch of where your proposed home will be. Uh, it doesn't have to look professional, just give accurate measurements, how far it will be from the road, from the property boundaries, those types of things. Then provide your outdoor lighting description. Mention two gray water outlets that you'll use to drain water back into the earth outside. A good example is a bathroom sink and a shower. Complete the application and submit it. Once you have your initial permit, you've got up to three years to complete your build. Once your build is completed, the final county inspection will focus on hot water on demand, as well as making sure all the previous items are taken care of. Once you have your permit, you're allowed to live in an RV while you build or work on your home. Does the county staff try to discourage people from applying for an opt-out? I certainly didn't get that impression. Um, as a matter of fact, while I was in their office, their staff cheerfully mentioned different times that the person at the counter was here for another opt-out. Is the opt-out permit going to be revised or dismissed entirely by Cochise County in the future? Well, there's a move currently to change or eliminate the opt-out permit. So I consider myself extremely fortunate to have acquired one. What is the cost of a permit? The costs can vary depending on your septic install and other factors. Mine costs $392. How do I contact the Cochise County office to learn about the permit? You can phone them as per the phone number on their website or I would say better still, hop online, download the forms that you'll need. And also another great thing is during our office hours, they've got an instant chat available. And that's invaluable. You can interact with one of their staff members. And what I really love about it, everything you chat about with that staff member is there for you to copy and paste so you can look over it later. So do I need the forms all completed before I actually go into the office in person? Uh, personal advice on this one, go ahead and download your permit, but be absolutely positive based on the instructions that you've completed it correctly. Um, in the end for me, I was still unclear about some things. And so I went in in person and there a staff member walked me through all of it. I never felt talked down to or did the staff member give me the impression I was wasting their time? The staff were cheerful, personable, and super helpful. Why did I personally go the opt-out route? As a retiree with a modest budget, my focus was on 
a shed to home conversion. It's an amazing debt and mortgage free option. The opt-out permit is the best fit to facilitate owning a modest home like this one. This, like other homes I mentioned earlier, are an alternative to the expensive conventional modern home that comes built in with major expenses to purchase or construct. I consider the opt-out the primary key for me to be able to live in an affordable living situation in a beautiful area like this. On a personal note, I can't thank whoever drafted the opt-out permitting process enough, and I'm never going to be able to express how much gratitude I genuinely feel towards those who created it. Thank you. Remember, if you have questions about the opt-out, check in with the county, and I wish you all the best on your own affordable home adventure. All the best. And thanks a lot for watching. Found this video helpful? I know it was a bit long. Give her a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. I have a lot more coming. Click the little notification bell and that'll let you know when a new one's been posted. Thanks a lot, folks. I appreciate you coming by.